Now, if I can do this with one hand, which I probably cannot, you do a little bit at a time, and you slowly incorporate the egg into the flour, chase it down. Okay, I think I'm going to need two hands to do this, so I'll be back in a moment. We're going to just do it gradually. This is the second fold of the egg. Now you do want to do it sort of sort of gently. You don't want to overwork this. Just ever, ever so gently until the egg is sort of incorporated and then you can do a little bit more. Ultimately, the dough should be sort of like a little bit lighter than and fluffier than Play-Doh. Okay, this is the final, I'm an assistant now, videotaping. So now we have the final fold. I'm just going to gently mound it and knead it. Remember, don't overwork it. If you need a little more flour, you can add some. This is a little wet, so I probably do need a little bit more flour, but you're just going to have to play it by ear. See, it's a little wet. It shouldn't be sticking to my hands like that. So, put a little bit more flour in it. And that uh, piece of wood you're working on? Oh, this piece of wood. This is my great-grandmother's challah board that my grandfather made for her. So this, these kripple are imbued with the, uh, with the kripple of the ages. Okay, let's see how it looks now. That's very spiritual. It's deep, man. to overwork it so otherwise you end up with sort of leaden crop look I mean even when the dough is light they can be pretty heavy okay okay so I'm now rolling rolling it out okay now I'm gonna take my little cup You could use a cookie cutter, of course, but I don't happen to have a round one here, so this works just as well. Actually, I was using these before. These are all jello molds, and they were okay as well, but they were a little bit, they were a little bit bigger. So I suppose at this point I've been making, I've been working on this for like four hours already, so maybe bigger is better and get finished a little bit faster. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for the moment and show you how I do, how I do kroplach. Just kind of, this is the kroplach dough, this is chopped meat, cube chopped meat, lots of onion, and the recipe is on the website, bubbygram.com slash recipes dot htm, and um, you can, um, Anyway, you probably have to make multiple batters, of b bunches of dough to do this, depending on how much, depending on how much um, meat you have. But I think this is, after much study, I think this is the way. And actually, I think these jello little jello mold things are probably a little bit too big. I think these are probably more the right size. So I just like stretch them out. And make sure they seal, because if they don't seal, you're going to end up with cr burst kreploch. And that's nothing worse than burst kreploch. I mean, nothing. Nothing! Okay. 
Okay. Whoops, that one got smushed. We'll do that one again. Okay. You could sort of tuck them in and tuck it in the side. Whoops, this one's broken. Okay. Well, okay, now let's say this one ripped. Rather than rolling the whole thing out again, you could just like make it into a little ball. Or if you have leftover dough, like little, you know, pieces of the edges, you just, you know, roll it up. They don't have to be perfectly round. Nobody's going to care. You're just happy to have them because, frankly, if you don't make them, nobody's going to make them. It's so much work. They should just be happy that somebody's doing the work, not them. There you go, another one. So when you have this left over, you just, you can either smush it up and, and do it again, or if you have like even a little tiny piece like that, you just roll it into a bowl. Voila. Now, the dough is kind of thick, so when you put the, when you put the, uh, bad, the uh, meat in it, you want to thin it out a little bit, otherwise it's really going to be tough. This one's probably a little too big and thick, but you could, you know, there's a, you'll feel it when you play with them because it's, if it's too thick, it's going to be tough, and if they're too thin, then they fall apart. So there's, there's a science to it. That's why I prefer to use the, the small one because when you push them out, they're just, you know, they're like pasta. They should be about the thickness of a ravioli. And I think it's actually kind of easy to just do it like this. Just lay it on and pick them up one at a time and do it like that. But it's a lot of crip luck with that much meat. I don't even know what I was thinking. I made way too much meat, as I always do. And uh, now I'm going to be making crip luck for the rest of my life. You'll notice around the edges it's a little thick. And that's okay. Because what you're going to do is I sort of smush it out and thin it in the middle. Make it like a little cup. So it's thin in the middle. And then when you fold it over and you pinch it, th it gets thin, but you'll, at least you'll have enough dough to work with to make it, to seal it on the end. And then it looks like that. And usually every, every I do like four or five and get them into the water. I don't like to let them sit too long because they dry out. So do a bunch of them, sort of pull it, fold it, tuck it in a little bit. So you gotta, if it smushes out, that's okay. Just Put it in the pot for next time. And that's it. And we take them over. <laughs> we take them over to the pot. And this chicken soup pot. You'll see this lovely pot. Was my grandmother's. My great grandmother's chicken soup pot. So we're imbuing with history. Every step of the way. Back to work. Back to the Kreplach mines. I'm going to be here all day. No, we're doing how, what time is it? Five o'clock. I've been working on this since one. So uh, this is not an easy undertaking. But uh, that's why I do it only once a year. These are floating already, the ones we put in before. And now you go. Kreppla. And then when you have soup, chicken soup, you throw them in the soup with the hot soup in maybe five, ten minutes until they cook through. I mean, they're already cooked. They just need to warm up. And you got crackle in your soup. Lashana Tova. Now that's a heap and helping of crackle. Mmm. Want to taste one, Mikey? Come here. I have a taste one. Mmm. That's a problem.